again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside the Idaho Vandals with head coach Rob Aki. I'm Dennis Patchen. Welcome to first place. <laughs> it's nice to be. I like being in first place. It's a good home. What did it feel like walking off that field with a victory? I was a lot lighter. I know that much. A gorilla had been ripped off our back, but the, the best thing of all was seeing the smiles on our players' faces. And, uh, and, and they accomplished a goal. They were, uh, you couldn't wipe the smiles off their faces. They were excited. The locker room was fired up. It was, uh, it was a great deal. And, and uh, hopefully it, uh, well, not hopefully, it has shed some, uh, you know, we've shed some pounds in, in being able to get this accomplished and, and get ourselves going. And I think they see, you know, the type of success that we're capable of having. There's certainly some things we can clean up within it, but uh, you, you don't lose sight of the fact that we got ourselves on the in the win column, and, and it starts with the conference. Uh, we're one and zero in the conference, and, and we can stay undefeated in the conference. We just win all the conference games. Okay, honestly, mm -hmm. Blackman throws the interception early in the football game. What's going through your head? We got to respond to adversity. That was something that we had talked about. You know, we talked about it, I think on this show last week. Uh, we talked about it as as a team. You know, the things that we need to do to be able to win the game. And one of them, you know, obviously you want to take care of the football and don't don't turn it over. That uh, that's a big thing. And, and and we talked about how it impacted us in some of the previous games. Um, take the football away. You know, and, and our offense, defense, special teams have the opportunity to be able to do those things. But when the sudden change does happen. Let's let's make sure that we respond to it. So therefore, if it's if it's the defense that's thrown out there in sudden change, well, the goal number one, and, and it's always the goal is don't give up points. But in a sudden change situation, uh, you get them stopped without giving up points. That helps get some of the momentum back. If it's a short field, hey, we can live with a field goal. If you if you get them stopped there, if they're already in field goal range when when the sudden change took place. But man, if you can get a three and out accomplished, that that really gets the momentum squelched. And and uh, you know we were able to get that accomplished at that point in time. So that was a good thing. And then you know on, on the flip side of it, when we have created a sudden change. So it's the offense that gets to go out there to respond to sudden change. Well, we need to turn those into points because those are free possessions, free points. And I thought we did a better job of that in this game. Was that three and out a momentum changer for you? Did you feel that early in the game that's like, this is a defining moment of this football game? Absolutely. It told me our guys were, you know, we, we were here to play and it helped, you know, because there was, uh, I don't know what it was like all, all the way around here. I know what it was like down here. And, um, you know, the, the intensity was, was all over the place. And, and, no, you don't like to see a, a, a turnover take place at any point in time. First play of the game, not a good thing. Our players stormed out there and got the job done because that's, you know, we, we talked about that. We're here to play the game and respond to whatever adversity may may be about and and, uh, and, and let's go make some plays. Let's just make more plays than the other team. That was the that was what we needed to do over the over the long haul. One play doesn't define a game. Um, but certainly, you know, there was some momentum that the other side had the ability to acquire by getting the ball at that point. Point in time, our defense being able to go out there and go three and out, uh, accomplish you know, start to accomplish some of the goals we had set for that game. I thought was was really huge. To be honest with you, coaching is all about teaching, playing is all about learning and learning how to deal with great success, but also adversity. When you get something that early in the game, do you as the coach stand on the sidelines and go, let's see how we're going to respond? It's in the back of your head. Say, okay, here's our opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> I don't stand a whole lot. I, I move around. I, I a little know, bit. I know, I know. But uh, yeah, that's that's exactly right. You know, here's our opportunity to deal with sudden change. How are we going to respond to it? And uh, you know, there was uh, that was the charge we were taking the field with, and that's something that's coming out of my mouth as, as as our guys get out there, and as the other guys are coming off the field. Hey. We're going to move on. We'll get the ball back for you. Uh, we're going to go make something happen. Don't worry about that. It's one play. Uh, I think we need to be able to flesh that and continue to move on. Was there a point in the game that you felt comfortable that we're going to win this game? Coming into the game, I felt like our team would. You know, we needed to make plays. There's no question about it. But I, I really felt like the way we were going, we were on a, we had a good way about us, and we were going to continue to go. I expected that. Yes. When you looked at the film after the game, what jumped out at you? Again, being happy that we made the things happen that we did, and, and talking through it, there were strong performances by a number of players, which I thought was was really good. Uh, what we did in all three phases of the game, and again, responding to the sudden change that was big throughout the course of the day, and, and it got some fire started for us. Um, that that's the most important thing, and, and making sure you know, because as, as coaches, you you know, you look at everything. There's a number of things that could be done better, and certainly need to be done better. Well, we can clean those things up, and we can continue. We're going to continue teaching those things. But we, we damn well better understand we won this game and feel good about it. Uh, celebrate that. 
this is how we're going to teach them to, to gain from, you know, the other things. I felt like there were some plays that we left out here um, that could have been big ones. You know, that first play, you know, with, with a little different throw, that might be a touchdown for us, to be real honest with you. Um, you know, I, I felt there were some big plays, uh, especially in the first half, that uh, that really could have contributed stronger to us uh, being in a little better position than we were. I felt like uh, while well, we did a good job of dealing with adversity, we still created a little bit of our own. We had some, some, some knucklehead penalties that we cannot have. Um, those are a lot of teaching moments that we're going to be able to gain from. Apologies to all moms of field goal kickers. No coach likes to settle for a field goal. But when you've got a weapon like Trey Farquhar, does that change how an offensive coach and an offensive staff call the game knowing that, well, we've got this guy we can fall back on? I mean, he's got nine 50-plus yard field goals now. Does that change? How does that affect the offense when you know you've got that weapon? Well, it gives you, I think, a little more comfort, and uh, and you respond to some situations when you know field goal range is a lot closer, or you know, a lot deeper for us than what it is maybe for some folks. And and the confidence that we've got in Trey and his ability to get that done, I, I think, really helps things. And you know, then if you find yourself where you've got a third down, and we know we're in field goal range, making sure that we are within field goal range, whether the, the play has the success we expect it to, obviously. But if you know, if we if we don't get the first down, we need to make sure that we are still in that in that field goal range. And and I think that uh, I, I think it enables you to call the game. With a little more confidence, to be honest with you. You talked about the smiles on the kids' faces after the game. How are they feeling now? Because the zero's gone. You're in first place in the WAC. How are they feeling going into week two of the WAC season? I think they all feel a little bit lighter. There's a little more bounce in them. They're, I'm seeing more smiles. Uh, certainly feel lighter and more athletic. All those things come about. Uh, I, and I'd like to believe that there's some some confidence has grown and, and they've seen how things uh, can work and, and do work. And, and, hey, we are capable of doing some pretty good things. You know, They look at the film also and they can see some of the things that we're capable of doing even more. Um, I think that helps. I really do think when you can, when you can have success and be able to see those things, uh, I, I really think that helps you gain more ground. There was a guy who had some big success for your defense, Gary Walker, at 13 yeah. tackles. Alyssa Charleston had a chance to visit with him. Not, no, not so much what he does on the field, but a little bit about Gary Walker off the field. Thanks, Dennis. Well, I'm here with senior safety Gary Walker outside of the Dome. It's easy to see that you're a very quick, aggressive, at times feisty football player on the field. Is there anything you do, sort of pregame routine or something to get you pumped up before the game? Uh, I wouldn't really say I do too much. Uh, basically, keep it simple. Uh, one thing I do actually do is uh, talk to my grandma. We get a good conversation in. She actually uh, prays for me, so that definitely helps a lot. I feel like that gives me more motivation and uh, that spirit that she has for me. Is there um, someone that has kind of been a role model in your life? Maybe not just football, but um, role model for life. Uh, yeah, I would have to say my dad. He's definitely been there for me uh, my whole life and stayed on me, taught me how to work hard, and uh, just told me to go for whatever I want, want to do in life. So he's definitely been that role model for me. Um, is there anything that not many people know about you, but you wish more people knew? Uh, I, I think sometimes people might think I'm a mean guy or that I walk around kind of with a frown on my face, but I just want to let people know I'm a pretty nice guy. I'm easy to talk to. so. Just don't judge that, that serious face at times. Your game face, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, if you could play any sport, any other sport other than football in college, what would it be and why? I'm not really too good at many other sports. Uh, I never really played anything else bes besides I ran track. So for college, I probably would say run track, even though I don't like the practicing. But <laughs> track would probably be the only thing I can do. Yeah, a lot of running. Yeah. Well, maybe someday we'll see Gary Walker out here on the new complex we have here. But um, good to chat with you. Thanks for talking to us. And back to you, Dennis. Tell me, tell me about Gary Walker from your perspective as a head coach. G Dub is uh, he, he's he's uh, he, he's the kind of player you get excited about. I guess would be the best way to determine. You know, he he he's got a great excitement about him. He's uh, he he flies around and uh, I mean, he played a physical game on Saturday, and, and his guy he's played a lot of football for us and uh, and has grown in a, and I think a great way over his career here. And he's handling things uh, um, a lot more mature and doing things very very well. He is one of the strong leaders on our football team. Uh, there's no question about that. I, I do believe he loves the game and he likes to play physical. He likes to be a presence out there. And, and he pushes a lot of guys. Sounds like Saturday somebody got tired of losing. <laughs>
<laughs> well, yeah, I tell you what, we, we, we got a big hit reel that's going to play on uh, on Friday night, and, uh, and he's going to be all over that thing. He was flying around that field. I was proud of him. I really was. Well, the Vandals are 1-0 and in WAC play. Uh, can they go to 2-0? and We'll visit with Rob Akey on week two of the WAC season when we return to this edition of Inside the Idaho Valley.